uh, my first experience with TransCanada was just uh, receiving telephone calls saying that uh, they were con considering putting a major oil pipeline through our property. And actually, I thought it was a practical joke from some of our friends. I didn't believe that that was even remotely possible. Uh, TransCanada had, had maps all over the table. And we started walking the table, and Mike pointed, and I went, oh, my God, it is us. <laughs> I'll never forget that moment. We were just devastated. Later offered me 250000 to come through my 300 240 acres, and I told them no. I'll never forget the shock that I was in, and I, I remember saying no. When the Keystone first came uh, knocking on our door, it was Myron Stafford who was a minister, and he was classic. He was very smooth and, uh, and uh, said, oh, Nebraskans are salt of the earth and all this other stuff. And then we were contacted by a land agent, of course, to right away just sign, and. We were very leery, knew nothing about it, so we just told him that we wanted to learn more about it. It's going to be, it's going to be wonderful, and and you know when when she got done with her spiel, it was like, oh my gosh, you're an American if you don't sign up for this thing. He said the two words "eminent domain," which made my husband's head explode. They start sending out letters. If you don't sign this easement within 30 days, we will proceed to condemn, use eminent domain to condemn your property. After meeting after meeting, and it became apparent that I wasn't gonna sign. Then they threatened me twice uh, with eminent domain over the phone and once in writing. They can take your land. So my mom thought she had secured a future for us, but I was very, very surprised because I believed her. To me, it's just like they're coming in saying, we're giving you a good deal. you got to realize that, and if you don't realize it, it's tough luck. Just disregard everything we told them about. So once we found out that they were just trying to pee on our boots and tell us it was raining, we knew that they, we could no longer <laughs> trust them. It was the fact that, you know, this land that my folks had worked so hard to attain, you know, that was supporting my mother. You know, some foreign company wants to come in and just take that away from them. I just, I couldn't let that happen. This is our lives. This is our home. Just take a stand. It's not about sitting on the fence. It's about making sure that you communicate what you believe in. Well, you need somebody to help organize people. We don't have the time or the effort to do that. And, um, and I see a real need for grassroots organizations. If it wasn't for those people that I became associated with and grouped with and found out things about, um, I wouldn't have been able to be involved like I was. Getting us all together so that we stayed united rather than um, divided like hey. It hasn't awakened everyone, but yes. people are waking yes. up. A lot of people. Yes. And our group with Bold Nebraska has just been yeah, phenomenal. It's pretty. The way that people have come together, Republican, Democrat, Indian, white, hippie, conservative. A hundred farmers and ranches save the water of this state. You've got to work together on this one issue and I think I think that's a lesson that can be taught a long time into the future. We, we learned we had help all across the country, people that were behind us and anxious to learn more and find out how we were able to stop this big, powerful company and, and uh, a foreign country. There's much work to be done. Right. This is and only the beginning. They did it because they believed in it, you know, and uh, I guess, you know, I just want to thank all those people.